the hypersensitivity is the exaggerated or inappropriate immune response to an antigen that results in tissue injury and functional disturbance rather than protection. If we see under normal conditions, we have two balanced mechanisms going on in the immune system, effector mechanism and regulatory mechanism. Both are functioning at an equilibrium that has been depicted in this bar graph. It's when we get the effector mechanism on higher side, surpassing regulatory mechanism, that time we get the hypersensitivity reaction. So it's evident that when equilibrium is lost between these two mechanisms, and specifically when effector mechanism overshoots the regulatory mechanism, that time the hypersensitivity is mediated. Here in this input table of immune balance, we see how effector dominance causes hypersensitivity and how regulatory dominance leads to immunodeficiency. In the middle, we have the balanced state where none of these complications occur. First of all, let's look at the balanced state. The mechanism here is quite simple. We see a coordinated activation of effector anti-regulatory cells maintaining proper homeostasis. That means the outcome is protective immunity. Their response to antigen is well controlled. That's controlled inflammation and clearance of pathogen. In this situation, there is a perfect balance between Th1, Th2 and Trig cells and the cytokine levels also remain balanced. Now when we move towards effector dominance, things start going out of control. Here the effector T cells like Th1, Th2 and Th17 become overactivated, releasing excessive cytokines. In this condition, the immune system starts reacting strongly, leading to allergies, tissue damage or autoimmune diseases. The dominant cells we see here includes Th1 which activates macrophages, Th2 which drives IgE and mast cell response and Th17 which promotes neutrophilic inflammation. So overall we see cytokine profile is highly elevated and we get acute inflammation or even tissue necrosis. Now on the other side let's see what happens in regulatory dominance. Here instead of overactivation, the immune system becomes too suppressed. Trig cells become overactive and start releasing high levels of IL-10 and TGF-beta, which inhibit effector T cell functions. As a result, the immune system becomes weak, leading to immunodeficiency or chronic infections. And we see in this state, the response to antigen is poor. Pathogens persist and even tumor cells can escape the immune detection. The dominant cells here are Trig cells and M2 macrophages, which further suppresses inflammation. So instead of protecting the body, the overregulation allows HIV, TB, chronic hepatitis or even tumor growth to persist. So overall, maintaining a balanced immune state is the key. Too much effector activity leads to hypersensitivity and autoimmunity, while too much regulation causes chronic infection or immune suppression. The immune system works best when the effector and regulatory mechanisms stay perfectly balanced. Now let's see briefly the classification of hypersensitivity. There are four types of hypersensitivity reactions. Type 1 called immediate or anaphylactic, involves IgE antibodies, mast cells, basophils and histamine. We see allergens trigger IgE mediated mast cell degranulation, releasing histamine and causing inflammation. The reaction occurs immediately, within seconds to minutes. Then we have type 2, which is antibody mediated, either cytotoxic or non-cytotoxic. It involves IgM, IgG, complement, MAC and macrophages. Antibodies bind to cell surface antigens causing cell destruction or dysfunction through complement activation or phagocytosis. It occurs within the minutes to hours. Then we have type 3 hypersensitivity, aka immune complex mediated hypersensitivity. It involves IgG antibodies, complement and neutrophils. We see immune complexes deposit in tissues leading to inflammation and tissue injury. It develops within 3 to 10 hours and may extend to days also. Then we have type 4 hypersensitivity, aka delayed type or cell mediated. It involves T cells cytotoxic T cells and T helpers and T helper cells. We see T cell mediated immune response causes tissue damage without antibodies. The reaction appears 24 to 72 hours after antigen exposure. 
Now moving towards the hypersensitivity examples of all the four hypersensitivity reactions. In type 1, we can see anaphylaxis, atopic dermatitis, food allergies, penicillin allergy. In type 2, we see hemolytic transfusion reactions and many more. In type 3, we can see serum sickness, orthos reaction. And in type 4, we see contact dermatitis, tuberculin skin test, multiple sclerosis and many more. So we can see many more examples within this table. So this is what the hypersensitivity is and its types. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.